everyone, Andy Raffel from eTechnics.com and today, well, it's TRX40 time. So let's take a look at the TRX40 Aorus Master. So first up, I'm going to apologize because this is all going to be handheld, but I wanted to get this content to you as soon as possible. And basically, this is what we're looking at. So it's the TRX40 Aorus Master from Gigabyte Aorus, whatever they're, you know, you want to call them these days. And this is the board itself. So straight up, uh, let's take a look at sort of the CPU socket. So it is the new TRX40 uh, kind of socket, but it does actually use the same socket design as the second gen uh, Threadripper. So that means that you can continue to use, I guess, the, the same CPU cooler or the bracket and everything thing is exactly the same which is going to save on a little bit of money which I guess when you're talking Threadripper and you're talking a board like this saving money is probably a very very important thing. In terms of what we have around the CPU socket you can see that we've got four dim slots here and four here of course it does continue to use that quad channel memory support. In terms of the VRMs we are looking at a direct 16 plus three phase 70 amp uh, digital power phase design so you can see that we kind of have these large heat sinks coming up here and also along the top. Not the chunkiest of heat sinks I've ever seen but you have to sort of look at it and think I guess really down to the length of it and how much surface area that's actually going to cover. It does have the patented fins array uh, kind of design that Gigabyte have been putting on their boards I think for probably the last two generations of boards both from AMD and Intel. It is also worth noting that with the memory support uh, because it is Threadripper and it's kind of aimed at I guess workstations and things like that it has got support for ECC memory as well. Uh, speed wise I'm not entirely sure kind of what's available yet a lot of that's going to come down to the processor but as we find out more information on that of course we will let you know. Now in terms of graphics card support you can see that we actually have four x16 slots or at least physical x16 slots but this does have support for two uh, PCI Express 4.0s in the x16 variety and then the other two are x8 speeds. These are all PCI Express 4.0 and that kind of leads me on to the next thing which comes down to M.2. So for M.2 we actually have support for up to three PCI Express Gen 4 drives so we've got our first one up here underneath this heatsink, a second one here and by the looks of it a third one is situated just here next to the chipset fan. Obviously when it comes to the chipset fan it does have one much like we've seen on the X570 boards but uh, this is actually very very large if you can kind of see through I guess these fins which it's really hard to kind of get the light on there but it's actually a very very large uh, sort of fan so I'm not expecting it to be too loud uh, and too noisy. I mean evidently once you get this into a system and everything you're probably not even going to hear that at all. Now it does use the EATX form factor so it's a little bit larger than I guess other uh, master boards that we've seen in the past with other very different chipsets but there is a very very good reason why some of the design choices that they've decided to go with such as and I absolutely love this the 24 pin that's actually situated kind of parallel to the actual main PCB it's a lot sort of easier and cleaner to route your cables and it does have a little cut out here so you can kind of just have maybe even one of them cooler master right angle connectors situated on here other power delivery on this board is two uh, EPS 8 pins which are actually situated up here instead of kind of conventionally where we'd see it kind of over here again this just kind of tidy things up a little bit and we do have some stuff for people who want to sort of troubleshoot and, and so forth so we do have the debug led and we do have some switches for um, switching over various different bios versions there are also some uh, vmod volt points as well so you can measure the voltages that you're maybe putting through the processor the memory and so forth other storage options on the board include eight sata 3 ports which do have the ability to go into raid 0 1 or raid 10. now another really really cool thing that i do like and as i say this i guess comes down to kind of cleaning the board up and making everything look as aesthetically pleasing as possible is the fact that all of our front panel connectors are here instead of generally we'd expect them down this corner again it just kind of keeps everything confined to this end of the board obviously for other connectors we do have them down the bottom of the board and they are very very plentiful so to start with we have two usb 3.0 uh, 3.2 connectors here we have some uh, usb 2.0 uh, kind of legacy ports here and probably the most fan headers I've ever seen on a board in this kind of location. So we do have kind of three fan headers down here and then we have another two over here. Other fan headers on the board include the two up here for your CPU fan and CPU optional and then there's another one up in the corner for a system fan. Luckily they have decided to get away with kind of the conventional one that we see here which I think is a really really good design choice. Other connectors on the board include the HD audio, we also have our addressable RGB here and our conventional kind of standard RGB header just here. There are uh, another two up here as well so we do have a, yet again an, a addressable one and a conventional RGB header. Other than that there is a USB type C connector which is pretty much where we'd expect it to be. Now one really cool thing that I like is in terms of the audio we do have the ESS Sabre Hi-Fi which generally doesn't need any kind of 
I guess, extreme cooling solution. It is audio at the end of the day, but we have seen this in the past where they've decided to plonk a heatsink on there. But the interesting thing with this is it actually has a heatsink connecting it. So we have a heatsink which basically comes down off of the VRMs and the phases and goes down into the audio. I don't think it's specifically to kind of dissipate the heat from the audio, but it's more to spread the heat from around the CPU socket over to this area, giving us extra cooling performance around the CPU socket, which therefore means more performance. Talking about cooling, the only other kind of passive cooling on the whole board is on the rear, which does encompass this, well, very large, pretty much the whole of the board apart from the cutout and a few little areas down on the edge of the PCB, but it does have this huge kind of metal uh, heatsink design, which again is gonna help dissipate heat. And finally, taking a look at the rear IO on the board, something that I love and I think every motherboard manufacturer should do is have the incorporated rear IO cover. Now on here, there are some uh, kind of buttons for, I guess, troubleshooting again. So we do have our clear CMOS and our Q Flash uh, Plus BIOS button, as well as a specific USB port that's, I guess, for um, flashing your BIOS specifically. There are some other USB ports, including USB 3.2, which is in pretty much abundance, a USB uh, 3.2 Type-C connector. Now we do have lots of options for connectivity to the internet and to your uh, network as well, including a single uh, gigabit ethernet port, as well as a 5G port as well. Of course, there is Intel Wi-Fi 6 802.11ax. And then for audio, we do have our gold-plated uh, audio connectors, including an optical SP diff, which obviously operates through the ESS Sabre Hi-Fi that I spoke about earlier. So there you go, that's pretty much all I can really go through today because uh, we haven't got the processors here uh, at the moment, we've only got the board, so I wanna do a little bit of a preview to show you kind of what's coming out. Now, there is no word on pricing at the moment, so I guess with a board like this, I am expecting it to be on the higher end of the scale. If I had to hazard a guess today, you're probably gonna be looking at about five to 600 pounds, maybe even a little bit more, but you are obviously paying for a premium with the TRX40 uh, sort of base processors and Threadripper, so, if you're going to be sort of spending that kind of money on a processor, then yes, of course, you're going to have to spend a premium on the board. But in comparison to Intel, it's probably still a lot cheaper. So yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what the performance is like and see exactly how the master performs. And bear in mind, we have got another video going up live very, very soon on another Aorus board, but this time the Extreme. So definitely be sure to check that out. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know exactly what to do, and I will see you in the next one. See you later, guys.